What's going on guys, Medivert here with Lethal Garage and today I want to talk about something a little bit serious. Now there is a new law passed in California that's related to exhaust. Now a lot of people think that this law is a completely new law and that's not entirely true. This law has actually been around for a very long time. They just made a modification to that law that kind of sucks. Let's get into it. As you guys know, out here in California, the beautiful sunshine state, the laws get a little bit crazy on cars. Basically, you can't do anything. I mean, and they basically just want everybody to drive electric cars, but we love American V8s. American V8, American V8. Exhaust on that one and this one, not the family bourbon though. <laughs> uh, that all being said, uh, California's had some laws that really are meant to deter people from modifying their vehicles. Now, if you have a 1975 vehicle or older, you're exempt from just about all of these laws. Anything law that has to do with emissions, exhaust, all that stuff, because there was no laws back then, and they can't enforce you to apply things to your vehicle, at least not yet. I'm sure they would love to. Uh, but it doesn't exist yet. But the purpose of this video is to go over a amendment to a law, uh, specifically a vehicle code violation, uh, 27150 and 27151. Those are the two laws that are explicitly adjusted by this new assembly bill that passed that wouldn't affect January 1st. It's called AB 1824. And most people didn't even know that this vehicle code was getting adjusted within that. Uh, the AB 1824 was positioned as a voter update um, across the board. Like, it had nothing to do with vehicle code. No one even talked about it. And, and to be honest, the code or the assembly bill actually had four other items, or well, three other items attached to it. One that had to do with election code, government code, which was directed at how the state is assisting people with money, uh, military and veteran code, and then they tacked on the vet or the vehicle code on there. Now, again, in all the advertisements and everything, when this code was live for the public to vote for, they didn't talk about the vehicle code. It got snuck in at the tail end of it and it passed. And rightfully so, the the election code and the, go the government code and the military and veteran stuff, that was all important stuff. It was just a shame that they attached this vehicle code to the bill. Now, all that being stated, what exactly does the bill do or what does it change? And it, again, as I mentioned, 27150 and 27, 27151 uh, in the vehicle code attaches to if you have a vehicle, it must be equipped with a functioning muffler and exhaust system that passes smog certification and also does not increase the sound of the vehicle's exhaust note to exceed over 95 decibel levels. Now, the actual code or the wording in this file, they're not super clear. Uh, and I don't know how clear this is coming over the camera, but you could see the last line here, it says, you know, uh, here, let me go to the top. Existing law further prohibits the modification of exhaust systems of a motor vehicle in a manner that will amplify or increase the noise emitted by the motor of the vehicle so that the vehicle exceeds existing noise limitations or limits. Now, I had to do some digging to find out exactly what were those no noise limits. So that's where I dug into 27150 and 27151 which actually highlight the 95 decibel limit uh, that you need. Now, I've done some testing on vehicles and I wanted to really just find out, like on a stock Camaro SS 1LE, what is the idle decibel level? And what is it in track, sport, etc.? And then I had to do some digging. It's like, well, what is the actual test that the state will require you to go through to read the decibel levels properly because you could put a db meter anywhere from 25 to 50 feet and it's going to change how loud that tone is for your vehicle so i had to go look up the state referee uh guidelines and basically it's 19 and a half inches away from the exhaust tip at the same level as the exhaust tip and at a 45 degree angle and what they'll do is they'll start the car up 
let it or let it rev up and idle down to its natural idle state and capture the db rating at that point and then they will rev the vehicle up to 2500 rpm and see what the db rating is at that point that is basically the test what i have done is i went out and purchased a db meter now this thing is kind of the nar nar it's super high quality it's one of the better ones and this is actually a model above what i found out the state referee actually uses uh, and you can see it's picking up my db rating right now talking my loud voice is reading at 79 81 etc db rating now as you guys know the as from me talking 95 db rating is the level that it your exhaust could be at and that basically boils down to like a hand clap here check this out i'm going to set this up so it doesn't fall over and i'm struggling struggling here there we go so i'm going to set this up here, let me get the camera set up apologize if it's shake city right now so come on camera if i clap my hand oh that was 104 i got big hands big hands uh 104 db rating but setting that all to the side who cares about a hand clap this is a 2018 camaro ss 1le literally at startup idle and then in tour mode track mode slash sport mode because at idle those are actually the same because the the valve is open the same at that point so let's hear that so we're going to do the decibel test at the exact angle again 19 and a half inches I actually put it at 20 because that's what almost all the online officers have been doing um, and it's set up so we'll try tour we'll try track we'll try sport we'll see where it's all at but from my understanding the way that they'll do it they start up the car they let it calm down from idle they'll measure the idle and then they'll rev it up to about 2500 rpm and see where the decibel reading is at from there so let's see where this one's at Hearing that car compared to the lethal Camaro now uh, I did set the camera up just so far away from my car but knowing my car is well beyond the limitations I pulled it out same test camera was uh, 19 and a half inches away from the exhaust tip check out this the car <laughs> so yeah it's uh it's pretty loud out there obviously on my car it is ridiculously loud even at idle it's in the 115 112 range in the decibel levels if i rev the car up it actually goes beyond the 130 db level that my actual device can read uh unless i go spend like ten thousand dollars on a stupid crazy professional grade db reader which i'm not doing uh that would be the only way to measure exactly how loud my car can go and as some of you guys know my car is basically set up as a race car now so i'm not expecting my car to be street legal or pass it does have long tube headers it does have a three inch exhaust it does have a cam this car is for all intents and purposes the most illegal thing you can drive in California, uh, at least to it. I mean, according to Democrats and the California liberals, they basically are saying my car is like putting cigarettes in a baby's mouth. It's terrible. It is. No, it's really not that bad. It, it, it isn't. And as much as California is trying to take it away, they have made some strides and created laws that I totally agree with. 
Uh, if you guys didn't know, the smog and the air quality in California in the 70s and 80s, it was a million times worse than it is now. But once carb and emissions and smog and all that stuff did take place, air quality did get better. Now, air quality is getting bad regardless out here because of a million other factors other than just vehicles. Uh, but <sighs> they really need to create a way that allows our vehicles to become legal in ways. Like, okay, yeah, my car does make a carb footprint on this world, but let me pay a fine. Let me, let me pay a set cost, even if it's per year, like on my emission output. You know, let me pay for the offset for that. Let me pay to plant trees and uh, pay for one of those offshore freaking buildings that suck carbon out of the air and turn it into whatever they do. Like, you know, give us options. The real question comes down to what exactly happens if you get in trouble or if an officer writes you a ticket based on this 1824 assembly bill. Now, straight up, the biggest change here is it's no longer correctable. Before, if you got pulled over, they could write you this ticket. You can then go get it fixed, go see an officer, get it signed off. You're good to go. Nowadays, it's a non-correctable violation and you have to go get your car state refereed to be able to get freedom. So if you have a completely stock car and say you got pulled over and you have to go down this route, you have to go get it state refereed. And if it referees is passing, then they throw the whole ticket out. It's gone. It's gone forever. And I did talk with the CHP officer. He actually came over to Lethal Garage, but for the sake of him not being revealed because he didn't want to show his face. And I respect that completely. He walked me through a lot of different laws and also why this law kind of came out to be. Now, the downside is, is it's no longer correctable. And what the, what does that mean? So if you are a, just blatantly breaking the law, you are over the 95, your car is not carb legal, you have to go get state refereed, you're gonna be end up paying a fine of $1,000 plus. The base fine is $1,000, and then they're gonna add all sorts of state legislation taxes and all this other stuff on there, like they're doing with cell phone bills and like or texting while driving and stuff like that. It's crazy. Uh, so expect it to be really expensive if you get this ticket. Now, on top of that, if you have to go get state refereed, they're not just gonna look at your exhaust and your DB level. They're gonna look at everything on your car. They're gonna look for the carb stamps. They're gonna look to make sure that it's legal. And if it's not, you're gonna have to get that fixed or they can make it so your car basically is impounded or can't be driven on California street roads. And that's the big problem here. See, before you can just go fix your exhaust and get it signed off and you're good to go. Now, you gotta go to state referee and suffer those consequences. Now again, if your car's from 1975 or older, you're basically exempt from all of this. Now also, if you're an out of state person, say you're military, say you're coming through, most CHP and city officers are not gonna write you a ticket for this because you are from out of state and your state doesn't necessarily have these laws but can they write you a ticket? Maybe they caught you street racing. Maybe they caught you at one of these stupid corner events where guys are whipping their cars around like idiots. Yes, they can impound, they can ticket you, but ultimately it's gonna come down to the judge and the DA and prosecuting you in court. Now, will you win that fight? That's to be determined. And it really comes to the judgment of the officers and the cops, but at the end of the day, anybody is susceptible to getting hit with this law or ticket or violations. Uh, so the biggest thing is, is stay safe out there. Don't participate in street racing. If an officer pulls you over, have the utmost respect for them. They have to deal with a lot of crap. And to be honest, you guys know what you've done to your car is technically illegal. You can go cry and complain that, you know, they're letting drug dealers out. They have better things to do. But at the end of the day, they are being paid to enforce the road law. CHP are not the guys that are going to go hunt down drug dealers. They are California Highway Patrol. Their job is to pull you over for violations of the vehicle code. They are doing their jobs. And when you guys got your license and registered and all of that stuff, you agreed to these laws. There's no way around it. And if you want to piss them off and be a punk young kid out there, you are asking to get arrested. They have a million and a half vehicle codes. Like I actually wrote a couple down because it's, it's hard to track them all. But one, if you get a 27156B, you're done. Your car is gonna have to go back to stock before it ever drives on the road again. 
if you get hit with a 2806, that is a vehicle inspection vehicle code. If an officer pulls you over and deems your car for any reason, doesn't even matter, he has full right to inspect your vehicle, ask you to pop your hood, anything like that. They could do it, 2806. And there's a million and a half supported codes underneath that uh, that support them and give them full right to do that. Now, uh, the other side of it is all you guys going out to these street corners or city streets where they do these whipping events and whip their cars around. First of all, please stop supporting that. These are some of the reasons why this law and many other vehicle laws are getting slammed down our throats and penalizing so many people. Street racing, these whip out events where guys call out like CHP cops, they, they're not dumb. They're following people on Instagram. They're following people to these places. And not only are the drivers susceptible, but spectators of the events, they're all laws out there to discipline spectators. Even if you're there, doesn't matter if you're walking down the street and you have nothing to do with it. If you're there, there's probability that they can write you a ticket and even arrest you. It's crazy, I know, but it's the law. And you guys are participating and supporting things that should not be going down. If you guys want to race and you guys want to do crazy stuff like this, come to events, go racing, go to Barona, go to Fontana, go to nearest drag strips, go to big events that have the big burnout boxes. That's the place to do this stuff. If you guys want to stop these laws and stop the craziness, you guys got to stop going out. Not Sorry, I keep saying you guys, but people need to stop going out and doing these crazy things. The biggest thing that's been happening in California, these swing events have happened and they are killing people. Like not because the cars are swinging around doing burnouts and big smoke and all that stuff, but the cops come down, people freak out, they hop in their cars, they speed away as fast as they can, and they get in accidents. It happened in Orange County, it's happened in Oakland, it's happening in LA multiple times. And so the literally state legislator and law are coming up with new laws to give CHP, to give local PD more authority to crack down on people doing these things. An unfortunate side effect is people like me who don't participate or support any of that stuff can get affected and people like you and it's not cool and it sucks yes the first thing we could do if we hate california laws move out of california that's not an option for everybody jobs are here families here it's not that easy okay go change your job it's still not that easy um yeah it's just not so <sighs> this video has been long uh there's there's a lot of things to really that i can keep going over but the biggest thing is respect your law enforcement you know, if you're being the idiot going 120 miles an hour down the freeway, zigging and zagging out of traffic, you better believe you're gonna get a fatty ticket. Expect it. If you're gonna be that guy, know you're gonna get caught and in trouble. I mean, and let's just be honest, the, I do not support the non-correctable version of this law, the updated law. And to overturn this, one, we have to get the voice of the community behind it saying, you know what, we're not happy with this. Two, we have to rewrite the law in a sense uh, in a proposal. We need to propose the change to the law to change it back or come up with a you know middle ground of what actually makes sense here where you know everyone's happy. Then we would have to find someone in the legislature that will actually foot the bill for us to become a votable item to become a law. That's where it's at. Now, there are some petitions and change.org stuff going down. I put links down below in the description. I've already signed the one to repeal AB 1824 because I just don't agree that we shouldn't be able to, uh, you know, get it corrected or we should be able to get it corrected without having to go through a state ref and everything else. It's just a nightmare. And really, I do feel some of the play is the state trying to grab money, but a lot of it is to try to give chp officers more control so that way they can put an end to these crazy street meetups that i'm going down and it's these meetups that are causing so many problems so yeah hopefully i've given you guys the information you're looking for in this video and i know it's been long um i have some video of my truck showing where the decibel level is with the gibson exhaust it's the 57 hemi uh obviously my car I even got my dad's um fifth gen camaro v6 uh it's a 3.6 with a magnaflow exhaust with the high flow cats 
and um, that was about it. There was a couple other cars that said they were gonna kind of come over, but they couldn't get here when I needed them to. So uh, if you guys want to swing by and get a DB reading on your car, I am more than willing to do that. I purchased that for this reason alone. Again, I purchased this actually a long time ago because I was going to do a video about db levels because again this law has been around for a long time 95 db i know i went back and it was at least 1998 when i first saw mention of it uh being in the system and then it's had a few updates since 2001 and 2002 so it's finally been reverted to this new update but the other interesting part is who it targets it initially targeted passenger vehicles and not diesel trucks and motorcycles etc uh, but it's just really hard to gauge because the actual bill law highlights passenger vehicles only but CHP website and bloggers and news outlets are saying motorcycles are now being targeted as well. So do what you will with this information. Let me know what you guys think below in the comments. As always, I appreciate you guys checking out the content. But until next time, I hope to see you on the road. tested on the outside and the inside if the mic was on the inside it was actually louder so on the outside so you can see on the test my dad's car didn't even really eclipse 80 my voice did because I'm just loud but the interesting thing is when they do the test, they'll let the car start up and sit idle. They measure the idle sound, not the peak sound from when you start up, because obviously any motor is louder when you start it. And then they'll do a rep. Uh, but you'll see my dad's vehicle obviously falls in line and it's well under the DB rating of 95.